Hi, it's me, your friendly neighborhood fusion mad scientist. And I've been running some tests. I've been doing some experiments, playing with dark forces. And I have something I want to show off today, uh, slash uh, get feedback on. We're going to talk about this whole big thing. And while I am going to be talking about one very specific thing, we're going to touch on some really, really important stuff for anyone uh, working in the fusion page, especially if you are working in the fusion page, making like presets or titles or templates, that sort of stuff. I found a way to do something that I think is pretty cool. But I don't know if it's something I'm going to pursue and actually, you know, like complete this entire project. Here's what it is. So the fusion page in DaVinci Resolve. It's really cool. It's pretty much what this channel is, is all about. And if you didn't know, all of the included titles and transitions and like generators and effects, at least the ones in like the fusion effects or fusion titles like subfolders in there, um, those are actually built inside the fusion page. So even if you never touch the fusion page, if you drag and drop a title on your timeline, you're actually running fusion just for that small instance. But there is one very, very foundational bit of knowledge you need to know about fusion. Fusion runs completely independent of frame rate. When you create a timeline on the edit page, you set a frame rate. You want it in 24, 30, 60 frames per second, up to, you know, whatever. But when you create something in the fusion page, you only have sequential frames. And if you create a title like the uh, free included titles in Resolve, if you make that in the Fusion page and you set a duration for that title of, you know, 100 frames, then that same animation on a 24 frames per second timeline will take a little over four seconds. On a 30 frames per second timeline will take a little over three seconds. And on a 60 frames per second timeline will take under two seconds. If you're making lots of custom stuff in the Fusion page, this won't be as big a deal because you will be natively creating something in the frame rate you intend to use. But if you animate something or design it or time it for a 24 frames per second timeline, and then that gets added to a 60 frames per second timeline, all of a sudden, all of those animations are going to be playing back way quicker than they were intended to play back. Let me jump in and just show you what I'm dealing with. I have dragged the same included title onto three timelines, one for 24, one for 30, one for 60 frames per second. Uh, on my 24 frames per second timeline, you can see, you can see the title pops up, comes to a rest uh, just over one second. On the 30 frames per second timeline, it comes up, rests, comes to a rest at almost exactly one second. When are we back on 24? 30 frames per second is, of course, very close to that uh, as well. So just barely like right under a second. But if we go to 60 frames per second, all of a sudden that's done playing back half a second in real world time. But of course, that makes much more sense that, you know, half a second on a 60 frames per second timeline, one second on a 30 frames per second timeline. That's how that's how math works. Now, while this is all working as intended, I still think this is a little bit of an issue. And by pushing my fusion knowledge to the limits, it's an issue I can solve. If I hop back to this 24 frames per second timeline, and if I just drag in this little version two I have created, we'll do that on this second version here. This animation takes, comes to a rest, you know, like a little over one second, one second, five, six frames. If I come to a 60 frames per second timeline, uh, drag that on that same animation, comes to a rest, a little over one second here, you know, one second and, you know, 12, 13, 14 frames. Now you might say, hey, isn't that uh, a little discrepancy? But remember, frames take different times. <laughs> this just messed me up while I was running tests on this. Six frames is a quarter of a second on a 24 frames per second timeline and 15 frames is a quarter of a second on a 60 frames per second timeline. This title is a little interesting since like no matter how you do it, unless you add like really long text, it has a little bit of a gap at the beginning, but I engineered this to perfectly uh, match the existing title in Resolve. I could fix every single one of the included titles in DaVinci Resolve. I could make them have consistent playback on whatever timeline they are dropped on regardless of frame rate, but there's a price and that price is performance. I tried doing a whole host of tests and it looks like um, in most direct comparisons at the same resolution, uh, these new versions of these titles because of some of the pretty wild expressions and extra uh, like parameters and modifiers and stuff all packed into these to make these work. Each individual title will take about two to three times uh, longer to process in your render. Now that sounds pretty rough and like, yes, it is. But the good news is that Fusion in general has gotten a, a lot faster over, you know, the last two, three years of development. Normal titles at all used to be a big consideration for how they could bog down and export. They aren't that much of a factor anymore. But this move uh, 
um, you know, would be wiping out some of those gains. If you're working in like 1080, your the normal included titles, you'll have like great performance. Um, and these new, um, you know, you know, new my new version, which will work on any frame rate, uh, will be a little bit worse than real time, which doesn't feel great when you're just rendering out a title. So really, I think I just need a little bit of feedback. I need to know what you all think of this interesting predicament. I think if there's a title you really like and you really want to use and you really want to use like on a uh, 60 frames per second timeline, it's probably going to be worth a little bit of extra render time to get uh, the effect you want on your timeline, looking and uh, feeling and animating the way it should. Is this functionality worth the hit to performance, especially if you're using these like on a 24 frames per second timeline, which I'm pretty sure they were built to work on, um, you're going to get uh, all of the pain with none of the reward because it's just going to look like normal. I'll probably keep poking to see if I can get uh, any more performance out of these, but I'm not too optimistic. I'm trying, I'm pulling out all the tricks here. My my original idea was just to recreate all of the included titles in Resolve um, and add this new feature, but that would be a pretty massive project. Um, if it's something I don't know people would actually be interested in. So you need to let me know whether this is something you actually want. Uh, if you just want a tutorial on some of the behind the scenes and expression sort of magic stuff that I used to pull this off, that's probably coming no matter what, because I'm doing some pretty cool stuff. But in the meantime, while I was stalled out a little bit on this project, uh, I also just wanted to show it off. I think we're doing some cool stuff. Um, I haven't seen really anyone do this kind of stuff in Fusion. Um, and this is really cool functionality. And it feels pretty cool to take something that is included in Fusion for free and, you know, sort of like power it up a little bit with a little bit of Fusion know-how. But you gotta let me know what you think. Uh, again, this is the peek behind the curtain of Fusion Mad Scientist hour. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.